Okay, I'm back out in the garage, going to continue working on the plane. I have a new heater, and if this thing doesn't keep me warm, nothing will. It's a little loud, though, so it might be hard to hear over me, so I might be doing a lot more voiceovers. Oh, well, the price you pay for staying warm. The heater actually worked really, really well. It got up to about 50 degrees, I think, in there, and that's... That's where I worked the whole day. And here you see, I'm pulling off all the Clecos to take the skin off yet again. Your hands are gonna be incredibly strong uh, in my post on my forum. I highly recommend the uh, grabbers, the little Cleco pneumatic grabbers. I, they're a good idea. But here we go, we're taking the skin off. The intent of which is to look at this. So I was getting little dimples at the uh, end of the spars and you can see here they're not quite rounded enough so I decided to go upstairs and shape them per some of the forums that I've seen. Alright let's go see how we did. Well here's how we did. So you can tell uh, it's just a slight rounding uh, at the very end, kind of take some of that point off a little bit in order to make that dimple uh, not so pronounced. And this is the dimpling I was talking about. I know it's minor, but it was just bugging me. Once I came back downstairs, it was uh, time to put everything back together. And this is the process of slowly clicking all the little bits and pieces back together and then putting the skin back on. And over the course of the next minute or two here, you're going to see me time lapse my way back into putting all, gosh, it seems like 200 Clecos on. By now, my hand was really sore. But, uh, yep, got to be done. And just when you think it's time to be finished, eh, you flip it around and do it again. <laughs> Good times. I looked on Amazon, and you can apparently get pneumatic uh, Clico squeezers for like $85 to $90. It's probably worth it, honestly, at this point. I probably should go ahead and get one. Once you get the skin back all good and tight, it's time to start the matched hole drilling. You pull out the, the drill bit and the drill, and you just start drilling every single hole. And the idea is you want to make sure that the skin and the skeleton holes match up because the uh, drilling that they do at the factory is not quite right the right size. But then you have to move every single Clico over and then drill again. So again, more Clico squeezing. By now, my hand was getting really tired and I kept switching back and forth between left and right hand. Once you're done with the match drilling, you have to deburr both the skeleton and the skin. One problem is the skin still has this protective coating. And one really clever thing that I saw, I think, on Ed and Colleen's website was that they were using a soldering iron to just draw a line across the blue uh, plastic vinyl, uh, which would basically give you a, a crease and allow you to rip off just that one piece. So I pulled out my trusty 30 some odd year old soldering iron and gave it a shot. Um, I, I do need to round my soldering iron a little bit. I'm worried it's gonna mark just because it has got a very sharp point. Uh, so I may go take it upstairs and uh, burr off the end a bit. But there you go, worked really well. I was really surprised. And so I proceeded to do the rest of the uh, skin using the soldering iron and and uh, then start the deburring process. I found the trick with the deburring was to uh, be really light. You don't want to chamfer those holes. You don't want to dig into it. You just want to go really light, be gentle, and just make sure there's no sharps, no rough edges. So I'm constantly rubbing my fingers over it to make sure that you know what I'm doing is not too deep and uh, is exactly what I'm supposed to do. And then, uh, you know, once one side is done, I flip it over and get to work on the other side. That's the thing about doing an airplane. It's a symmetrical machine. So that means every time you do a thing, yeah, you have to do it twice, at least. 
And here I'm doing the skeleton underneath. Uh, after this, I go through and uh, the next step is to mark several of the holes. Uh, that will be a, a screw-in fairing. I don't actually show that because it's just a matter of figuring out which one's which and putting a piece of tape over them to, to know not to uh, put a rivet in there. So I'll leave that out. I don't need to bore you with that. So there you go. That's it for this, uh, for today. Tomorrow, I'm going to go out and start dimpling. Oh, the excitement. Thanks for watching.